Yes, it's on. <laughs> okay. Uh, first order of business are the are minutes of the previous meeting. Are there any corrections or additions? Move to accept, please. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Okay. okay, we have had um, some correspondence that came in today, which I will announce. And we also had a memo from the town manager regarding the Jay Cox farm stand. We had a letter from Mr. and Mrs. Young regarding the Cox farm stand that came in today. Uh, a, an email from Bill Nickerson about the Arboretum from Gail Atkins about the Arboretum, from Nancy Sears about the Arboretum, uh, Maya Cohen about the Arboretum. And I, that's all that came in today. In addition, we've had several other emails that have come in over a period of time, which we all have in our packets. So we will start with the Fort Williams Arboretum site plan. Mr. Mitchell, do you want, oh, whomever is presenting, do you want to come up, introduce yourself, yes. and We're tell the group about present. the project? Thank you. Um, hi. I'm Catherine Backestow, and I'm uh, part of the Ad Hoc Arboretum Committee, and it consists of John Mitchell, Rick Churchill, and Chris Murray. Uh, about two years ago, a group of current and former Cape Elizabeth residents got together to consider the possibility of an arboretum at Fort Williams. And we brought various experiences and backgrounds to our group, but we all shared three things. A love of Cape Elizabeth, of Fort Williams, and of horticulture. And we really have benefited, I think, we and everybody else in Cape Elizabeth and beyond who loves Fort Williams, from the foresight and generosity that was shown by the residents of Cape Elizabeth in 1964 when they decided to uh, buy and preserve Fort Williams. Uh, but it was, I think, a big burden for the town to take on. And I think over the years, uh, it's been well cared for, but within limits. And I think that the horticulture uh, has been neglected somewhat due to lack of resources and also lack of a clear plan for how it could go. And I think at this point, much of the greenery that's left in, in Fort Williams is invasive plants rather than the native or familiar plants that we all know and think of. And Rick will talk about the invasive plants and kind of the horticultural issues. Our plan is really for well thought out plantings around the perimeter of the fort on the existing walking paths. And these sites are currently dense thickets of plants. Lots of beautiful old trees have been taken over by bittersweet and other invasive plants and are being choked out. And we, we are proposing that these areas over time would be replanted with native and sustainable plants in groups that would be by species, for example, maples of different varieties or um, viburnum, nut trees, so that there would be an educational component um, for people young and old to go and learn and understand that these are good trees that they can grow in their yard and this is how one might look different from another. Um, and we imagine that in a perfect world, maybe over time, there could be nature camp and an opportunity for kids to really become involved and to understand um, the benefits and the importance of nature in our lives. Uh, whether by dumb luck or coincidence, we had come up with this plan, which turns out to be quite consistent with the master plan as revised and supported by the town council in 2003 and then also a subsequent plan which was done in November of 2004 by OST, which is a local engineering firm. And at that time, uh, they were engaged to look at the horticulture of Fort Williams and to make recommendations. And they had a number of concerns and recommendations that they identified in their report. Among them, they felt that the older trees needed to be maintained and cared for. 
They had concern about control of the invasive plants. They recommended that ocean views be opened up in some cases to assure the coastal shrub layer and also recommended that the formal gardens by the front entrance and the pond be cared for over time. Uh, they had other recommendations, but their conclusion I think is important, and I'll quote it. The sustained provision and pres preservation of the Fort Williams Park vegetation is essential for the park's long-term use and enjoyment. This forestry and arboriculture report outlines the strengths of the existing conditions of the park and future challenges facing the town in maintaining the ecological beauty that the park contains. So I, I believe that they were worried about um, continued neglect or inattention to the horticulture of, the, of Fort Williams and the potential danger for the park and all that it, it represents. John Mitchell, who we'll talk in a minute as well, has designed an initial demonstration site for one of the 15 areas that we identified, and he'll speak more specifically about his plan. Um, but we hope to use this as an example of what could be done elsewhere and to provide comfort to skeptics that it won't change the face of Fort Williams, it will only enhance it. Um, and we hope that we can raise the funds to plant and ma maintain in perpetuity uh, to be able to begin the project in 2009 in the spring. Uh, I'd just like to cite what I think are a few benefits. Um, one, I think the name Arboretum may sound grand to some and it may sound ominous and intimidating when in fact, by definition, it is simply a place where an extensive variety of woody plants are cultivated for scientific, educational, and ornamental purposes. Our plan retains the existing open spaces that are for recreational and other uses. It enhances views as tangled thickets are taken down and cleared out and, and rid of invasives. Really, it would just become another feature of Fort Williams Park, just like Portland Headlight is and the military batteries and bunkers. And I think, too, that it has a broader community appeal. It's certainly a tough market to try to raise money. But I think that with kind of a focus and a purpose and a future that we might have access to private donations, maybe grants, um, and from friends who have a love of Cape Elizabeth wherever they are. Um, I will just share with you that I got an email forwarded to me yesterday from the fellow who wrote the article in the Portland Press Herald. And this email came from a woman who started out by saying that she lived in Australia and read the Portland Press Herald every day. And her father had been stationed at Fort Williams before World War II. And when she came back to Maine, she always would go to Fort Williams. And she wanted to know how she could get in touch with us to make a donation for this project. So I was quite cheered and um, surprised, but just delighted, really, that somebody who lived in Australia who had a connection to Fort Williams would want to contribute to the, uh, the future of Fort Williams. As you know, we have the approval of the Advisory Commission as of June and the Town Council as of July. And um, we have support of the Town Manager, the Director of Public Works, and the Town Planner. And we hope tonight to receive your approval for our project. Again, we know it's a difficult economy and we take a longer view, just as our uh, some of our parents did and, and friends did in 1964, and we hope that this could offer a legacy for future generations. And now I'll let Rick talk a bit about the invasives. And John. Oh, John's going to talk first. Okay. Thank you, Catherine. <coughs> My name is John Mitchell, Mitchell Associates. 
and uh, a member of the ad hoc committee. Uh, just to review uh, briefly with the, the board, this is the master plan for the Arboretum, um, identifying the 15 different pockets of plantings um, represented in the green. And as you can see, um, that the majority of the, the plantings of the pockets are located on the perimeter of the fort um, along existing walkways. Uh, the red dot indicates all of the existing uh, walkways that inter would interconnect the 15 different pocket plantings. Um, we have selected, the committee has selected area B, which is located right here next to Ship Cove um, as the initial planting of the demonstration site, as we're calling it. And this is an enlargement of area B. Um, the committee also felt that it would be appropriate to limit, at least initially, the, um, the actual plantings. So what we've done is to divide uh, area B into two phases. This is phase one. This is phase two. Um, we further divided phase one into phase 1A and 1B. Um, phase one, the entire phase one will be uh, cleared. The site will be prepared for plantings, but only phase 1A will be planted initially. Phase 1B, which is this area, will be loamed and seeded. Um, and then when uh, we receive the uh, enough funds to go forward with 1B, then we'll implement uh, the plantings of 1B, and then we'll move on to phase two. But um, the design concept for, for, for the demonstration site consists of, uh, well, first of all, this area is the existing parking uh, that surrounds the parade grounds. This will give an opportunity for people to park and to walk across a, uh, we're proposing to provide a painted crosswalk crossing the main access drive, which will get the pedestrian up onto an existing walkway, and then they can circulate and enter the Arboretum. Um, the Arboretum consists of a, a network of trails, a uh, curvilinear uh, a trail network that, um, that will form spaces, um, as you can see, which form spaces for plantings and lawn areas that will be surrounded by plantings or educational uh, plantings or sitting and viewing areas. Um, the, the, uh, the focal point of this demonstration site is, is included in phase two, which is this uh, circular design here, which is designed as an overlook that will provide panoramic views of Castle Bay and more of a formal arrangement of, of plantings. The, uh, the plantings for Phase 1A, uh, we've indicated a plant list uh, on, on your sheet. Uh, it contains uh, several different tree species, and uh, there are six different plant or shrub uh, species that we uh, included in this initial planting here. What is shown in the yellow uh, represents the, uh, the battery Hobart, uh, which is basically just uh, covered with uh, invasive plants at this point, but we do intend to, to clear all the plants and, and open that up so they will be visible. <coughs> So at this point, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm going to turn it over to Rick and then back to me. Well, it's been 10 years since uh, I came before this board. Can you hear? Please. Rick Churchill, former resident, lived uh, here in Cape Elizabeth for 27 years. Um, my previous experience standing at this podium would be as the tree warden. Um, I was the tree warden here for about 10 years. and. Uh, got to know many of the trees in town, and in particular, the trees in Fort Williams. Um, unless someone else here disagrees, I'm probably the only one that's looked at every tree in Fort Williams over two and a half inches in caliper. 
because I did an inventory. Um, at that point in time, I became very familiar with exotic invasives. Uh, any of you that have chased a soccer ball, chased a kid, um, you probably met the multiflora rose, probably met bittersweet, um, probably wasn't a lot of fun, maybe for your kids. Um, but in the uh, 10 years that I was a tree warden, and having spent a lot of time there, um, it became apparent to me that uh, there was sort of a battle going on that uh, wasn't going to be won by the existing vegetation. Uh, the battle was between those things that came here uh, from someplace else and those things that had been here for quite some time. Um, and those exotic invasive plants uh, in the last 10 years that I haven't been as familiar with before, uh, they went in the battle. And uh, when I was asked to uh, become a, a part of this committee, uh, which is an interesting group, plant people and landscape architects often, they don't necessarily agree. Um, but John and I have come to a great deal of agreement on this, that if you don't change it, um, it's probably going to be very different in the future. Uh, and we think our uh, plan addresses uh, many of the issues that are related to exotic invasives. Um, and if you were to go online and Google at this moment, what's the problem with exotic invasives? Um, it's a threat to biodiversity. And uh, if you look at the fort, when you think of Fort Williams, what do you think of as a tree? That's a question. The audience? <laughs> oaks, right? You have a bunch of red oaks there. It's uh, between the red oaks and uh, some birches, it's a monoculture. Uh, very few species there. And uh, why is that? Because the understory hasn't been allowed to grow as it normally would. Uh, that being that uh, the bittersweet, the autumn olive, um, the multiflora rose, they're able to outcompete because they don't have competitors that our native plants have. So as a member of the committee that's most concerned with the plants themselves, uh, I would say I would urge this group uh, to look at the fort as a resource that if you want to uh, be thinking ahead 50 years or so, uh, if you want to remember the fort as uh, a plant uh, collection, as an arboretum that is very, very narrow, then don't do anything because it will keep getting narrower. Um, but if you want to think ahead and uh, have folks going in there and seeing two or three different species of oak, which the white oak was very, very common here, um, but because of shipping, most of them were cut. Um, but to be able to have two or three different species of oak, two or three different species of um, birch, uh, that's the healthy way to have a collection of plants. And I don't care if you call it a, an arboretum or a collection of plants or whatever, I will always think of it as my kids thought of it, the fort. It's the fort. And uh, it's worth doing something for. Um, and I live in Newry, so I don't have a lot to, invested in Cape Elizabeth any longer, um, but it would be a travesty um, not to at least take care of the exotic invasives. Thank you. Um, just to, to finalize our presentation, um, in our letter that we submitted to the board uh, dated October 31st, we outlined uh, a number of concerns and questions that were asked by the board at the last meeting, um, stormwater management, erosion and sedimentation control plan, uh, future plans, and uh, our, the implementation schedule. Uh, the one thing that I, uh, before we open it up to questions, I would like to review with the board um, future plans. That's uh, paragraph number three. Um, as we go forward, uh, assuming we get approval this evening, as we proceed uh, on subsequent phases, uh, the process that we're going to go through that we're proposing 
is to uh, develop a detailed plan as we have for this, for the demonstration site, uh, to present it in front of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission and uh, receive approval from them to ensure that our plan conforms to the master plan uh, as well as the forestry and agricultural assessment and maintenance program manual. Uh, once we, um, the Fort Williams Advisory Commission will then provide a recommendation to town council. Uh, we will go before the town council to review our plan um, and get approval from the town council. Uh, the uh, Mike McGovern, the Cape Elizabeth Town Manager, will, will monitor or make sure that all of the funds are, are in line uh, before we proceed. Um, and then the Public Works Director will oversee and manage the actual implementation um, of each phase. So are there any other questions on any of the materials that, that we submitted? Uh, I have a question. Um, invasive plants as compared to the pods that you have identified, and I was not at the last meeting, so this may have been answered. Are the pods identified in a way to address areas where there are significant invasives, or are we talking about two different efforts, the planting of the various pods and then the removal of invasives or treatment of the part for invasives? Uh, many, of the, many of the pods that we've identified uh, and basically, the way that we did this is that we as a group um, walked around the fort and visually identified each of these pods. Mm -hmm. um, many of the pods do contain invasives, and those are outlined in our uh, booklet here um, under the site inventory. <coughs> um, but some of them don't contain invasives. Uh, for instance, pod J is an open lawn area uh, with a very nice backdrop of uh, mature oaks. Um, and pod 11 is mostly an open area. Uh, but a lot of these pods here, uh, you know, B, C, D, E, F, uh, a part of F, G, H, I, all uh, contain invasive plants. So the goal, you know, one of the goals of this of this project is to rid um, the invasives as well as introduce new species, native species. Thank you, John. Any other questions, Maureen? I wanted to bring something to the board's attention. Uh, you have a proposed motion before you this evening, which I drafted, and I wanted to make an amendment to that motion for you to consider. Um, it states under the conditions, it lists both the, um, it lists the Fort William Advisory Commission as the group that would have to uh, grant approval for any subsequent phase, and the planning board needs to make sure it says town council rather than the Fort Williams Advisory Commission since they're an advisory group. Is it number three under the findings? One. Just change. So it, what's more important is the condition, not the findings. Under one, the condition number one would be without the approval oh my God, of the I was looking at the town council. Previous page. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody have anything else right now before we have a public hearing or do you want to hold any questions until we have the public hearing? I have one threshold question. One of the concerns is not so much about the initial funding, but the ongoing maintenance of the pods. And I was wondering if you could address that before we have our public hearing. The budget that we developed for the demonstration site incorporated um, monies to go to pay for ongoing maintenance. So that that would be our plan as we developed a budget for each site to include maintenance. Um, as dollars needed to have in the bank to be able to pay for it once it was planted. And in fact, my hope is that a lot of this work could be done on a volunteer basis, but you don't want to have to count on that. You want to be able to pay for it. So I don't know if that answers your question. Um, I, I think it does, but just some clarification. So when you, before you begin a new phase or a new 
uh, pod, um, you would ensure that the maintenance for the existing pods would be taken care of? Well, yes. I mean, presuming that the, you wouldn't put a shovel in the ground until you have enough money to get the, clear the site, plant the trees, and maintain them in perpetuity. So each site would be treated that way. That answered my question. Thank okay. you. So in other words, before you leave, um, the budget for each site will be substantially different depending upon what you're doing to, to that. Right, depending and on the size will, and what's involved in terms of, of getting that it That will all have to be approved by the town council as they're going. Exactly. And those maintenance funds will be town funds or are they private? No, they would be privately raised. This would not be an incremental cost for the town in terms of maintenance. Okay. And, and how many years will you have a maintenance budget for? What are you projecting? Well, you know, there are a lot of variables in terms of what can you earn on it. But, I mean, the initial budget that we developed for this site presumed five, six, seven years. And again, hoping that funds would grow um, and that money, that, that the jobs could be done on a, um, on a volunteer basis. I was a banker for a long time, and I'm not sure that I have a lot of comfort in terms of projecting out too, too far, but we would hope that there's enough of a cushion that it could earn money, and we'd find ways to, to keep the cash going and growing. And in, in fact, if it doesn't work that we have enough money for maintenance, we'd have to raise more money to do it, but I don't think that that would be a problem. And this is a separate bank account? Yes. With the town, or? Yes. Yeah, it's not our it's not our bank account. I mean, it would somehow we have to work out the details whether it becomes an account that's part of the Fort Williams Charitable Foundation, so that donations would be clear and um, for the purpose of planting trees and taking care of trees. And Mike, excuse, go ahead. While we're on this topic, you mentioned that you already have initial approval from the town council, and I'm wondering if you can tell us what that approval is and, and what the understanding or conditions are of that approval in terms of whether you need additional approval, additional demonstration of financial capacity, and including maintenance capacity, before the town council would approve your proceeding with Part B, Part C, or, and future parts, and what that understanding is. I'm not sure I exactly understand what you're asking. For example, do you, if the initial project sure, here yes. requires $200,000, do you need to go back to the town council and report that you have raised that amount and then get authorization to proceed either with this project or a subsequent project? Thank you, Kathy. Uh, Michael McGovern, town manager. Uh, I would attempt to speak for the town council. Uh, the town council, to answer the beginning of your question, uh, was approached by, by this private group. They were interested in doing this. I think the town council was very excited with the concept. They endorsed the concept. They authorized the application to the planning board. And they also understood that the, that the first phase in particular, the one that's being looked at this evening, was being done with assurances that would be privately funded and that it would be done with the assurances that there'd be some sort of an endowment for that particular phase. Uh, the town council also heard assurances that future phases would be fundraised and that, that there would be an endowment for it. However, you know, it's, town councils don't tie the hands of future town councils. Uh, you know, future town councils might see the, this project, might see it as something terrific, and uh, you know, might want to put some funding into it in the future. Uh, ultimately, that's up to people that we've probably not yet elected to the town council. All right. Well, let's hear some more comment, and then we can pursue this a little more. Is everybody ready for the public hearing now? Okay, we'll call the public hearing, please. Anybody who wishes to speak, come to the <coughs> microphone, state your name and address, and say whatever you like about the project. Nobody wishes to speak? Betty Crane, I live on Nine Starboard Drive, and I would like to thank K 
Kathy and her group. I spent quite a bit of time in the planning board office a week or so ago, a couple of weeks ago, asked for the file and went through it from really beginning to end, uh, although I still don't understand a lot of it, but uh, I think they did a magnificent job. There is no question about that. They have covered practically every aspect of this. So thank you for that. However, I don't think this plan, this arboretum, is compatible with Fort Williams Park. And the reason being, people go to the park for the views, for the lighthouse, for the museum, for the ball fields, the playgrounds, walking, exercising, taking their dogs. We really, my feeling is, and it's my personal feeling, um, as a private citizen, um, we don't need 15 formal arboretums in Fort Williams Park. And I use arboretums, S, I looked it up in the dictionary, you don't have to end with an A, it can be arboretums for plural. Um, I just think that uh, Fort Williams just is such a natural, beautiful place. And I, I realize there's invasiveness. I realize we have to control the views. The views have been lost in the past few years. I've just begun to notice when I drive into the park, I can no longer see up to Portland. And I realize that we've got to do something about that. But when you consider this project, this 15 section project, could easily reach almost a million dollars. I'm sure with a few hundred thousand dollars, we can start to control these views and get rid of some of, some of this invasiveness. So that's my feeling about the beauty of the park. It should really be maintained in a natural state. We don't need this. But, but foremost in my mind is that there are many projects in the, in the park which are under study at this time. Two years ago, the Council, Fort Williams Advisory Commission, and the Fort Williams Foundation got together, did a lot of you know, thinking, planning, trying to decide what we need, over and above regular maintenance. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about big projects. The Goddard Mansion, the bleachers, Battery Keys, Battery Garage, Battery Blair. We, we really have to think of these things. And I'm very much afraid that dollars, donor dollars, are going to be used for this that would normally be used for the park projects, which are under study at this time. And I'm, I'm really, really worried about that because those three organizations spent so much time, and right now there's a study going on of all these areas. We're spending a lot of money right now to get these areas studied and decide what to do. So I, I just have this feeling that we're, we're going to divert some funds, a lot of funds, for this huge project that should be used in other, other areas. That, have been studied and have been prioritized by these three organizations. I do think when Kathy first came, mentioned this, um, I certainly want to have a memorial to Dr. Barris Bapisto in the park. He was just a wonderful person. Uh, I used, when he lived on the corner of uh, Smuggler's Cove and Shore Road, you all may remember. You'd see him out, this is after he retired, you'd see him out there with his boots on and back at the, the ranch house digging, putting in this absolutely magnificent rose garden, which was so enjoyable. I just loved driving by. I'm surprised I didn't drive off the road looking at it because you could just tell how much he enjoyed it and, you know, how beautiful it became. I'm sure there must be a place in the park where we can have a memorial to this wonderful man and his family. And 
not change the character of the park. That's about all I have to say. Thank you but I, I hope you will consider it. I know these things don't have too much to do with the planning, I guess. I mean, I understand the planning board is more interested in the infrastructure and what's gonna, what it's going to do to the landscape. But I hope you'll consider all these. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hi, my name is Nate Green. I live on 1147 Sawyer Road. I didn't come here to speak to this issue. I came to another issue <clears throat> I was surprised to see. I looked at the, I'm a landscape gardener and arborist here in town. I looked at the plant list, it's fantastic. It's a well thought out plant list and I just uh, thought after this speaker I would get up and support the project as a uh, Resident, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else who would like to speak, please do. Uh, my, my name is Hans Hackett. I live at uh, 290 Mitchell Road. And I, I'd like to speak overwhelmingly in favor of this project. Um, I mean, since my wife and I moved to Cape Elizabeth nine years ago, uh, we inherited uh, two-thirds of an acre of grass for the most part. And uh, I, I really wasn't interested in growing in mowing grass. And uh, so I was actually inspired actually by Rick, Rick Churchill here, actually, when uh, he was uh, over at SMCC. Uh, it was an article he wrote about uh, native plants. And, uh, I mean, after all, native plants, I mean, they were designed to be in this climate. Uh, they support uh, local wildlife uh, through uh, uh, cover or berries or seeds. And they ultimately can take care of themselves. I mean, uh, and I really wanted to address all the, co the questions about maintenance because, I mean, ultimately a native plant is designed to be here and can take care of itself. So I, I'm not really sure how much maintenance is involved over time. And I mean, even if this group gets started, I mean, you've got a, a volunteer army here and anybody who wants to step up and uh, battle against native uh, uh, or invasive uh, plants rather, uh, I mean, I, I would applaud them anyway, because I, I don't know if, if any of you have ever dealt with bittersweet or uh, uh, knotweed, uh, some of the plants that are present here in Cape Elizabeth, but uh, they are a formidable uh, foe uh, to, uh, uh, to w work back against, or, to, or, to, or e even just to control them or, or get rid of them anyway. So, so, I mean, even if this group were to do their first phase and then just stop, you're going to wind up where you are right now anyway. I mean, these, these plants are just going to, I mean, the bittersweet will just take over it again. So, I mean, you, you've lost nothing, really. You, you've risked nothing. And, uh, I mean, the idea of diverting funds to one project over another, I mean, you've got a group of people here interested in plants. I mean, maybe there's another group of people out there that's interested in the mansion. And, you know, so if they want to step forward and fund the mansion or fund the bleachers. I mean, I understand that there's all kinds of needs in the town, but uh, anybody who wants to step up and volunteer their time or volunteer their, uh, their funds, I mean, I, I think that we should, we should more than encourage that. Uh, uh, and actually, I, just, I also wanted to address this, this idea of native plants and, and this plant list, which is fantastic. Uh, uh, you know, my, my wife and I have planted our, our yard back with a foundation of native plants. And what I find interesting about planting native plants is that uh, we get compliments uh, from people who visit our property on the native plants. You know, so people don't even know uh, what traditionally would, would live here and belongs here. And uh, also, too, you know, my wife and I, we've enjoyed all the wildlife that show up as, as a result. Uh, I mean, uh, our native bird is, is fed by native plants. I mean, at least it would be traditionally anyway. So uh, th there's wildlife that actually may like, move in or become more prominent in the fort if uh, 
a group like this succeeds, and I and I think it's just it's fantastic. I, I mean, I, I think that. Um, I mean, again, anybody would step forward to volunteer their time, to uh, fundraise uh, for a project like this. I mean, how, how can how can you say no, really? I mean, I mean, you, you've got uh, you've got what you're going to get if uh, if you do nothing now, anyway. So, I mean, I mean, why not give this a chance? Thank you very much. Y yes, you're welcome. Anybody else who would like to speak? Don't be shy. I'm Chuck Wilson. I'm a resident of the, the town. I live on Mitchell Road. I have been for 40, over 40 years. And I happen to be the chairman of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. And I just wanted to clarify a few points for you. Uh, <clears throat> we were we looked at this project at length uh, over a period of several months. And what we really basically determined was we had a group of people who were willing to raise the money to do something for the town that we were otherwise would have to do in some shape or form anyway using tax dollars. So the real advantage here was that we were getting the things done that are consistent with our master plan and our agricultural plan <clears throat> and getting them done without putting tax dollars into it. So it was a wonderful opportunity to achieve that and improve the fort uh, <clears throat> and rid ourselves of a good deal of invasive plants. With regard to the other projects we are looking at, uh, most of those are going to be in the future. They're a few years off and we're convinced that the funds that would be raised for this probably would not be impact the funds of the other projects because there are different groups of people, as one gentleman indicated, that are interested in the different things that are going to happen. Uh, and we frankly don't know when these other projects are going to occur. We do know that we need to do a lot of work with the invasive plants, and we don't have the dollars in the budget to do it. So when you have this opportunity, we looked at it and said, wow, this is a wonderful chance to improve the park, not change the park, improve it, uh, and allow us to do all of the things that we're trying to do over a period of time. I just wanted to make sure you understood that this is fully endorsed by the commission. And we've done a lot of, spent a lot of time looking at it before it got to this point. So uh, it, was, it actually was an unanimous vote. Mr. Wilson, may I ask yes. a question? Um, it's come up in a couple of comments, and it came up uh, again this evening, about the character of the park changing as a result of the, the arboretum and the pods. And I, I was wondering if you could address that. You've said it won't change the park. but We, what, we don't mission? believe it's going to change the character of the fort. If you look at the way it's laid out, it's all around the perimeter, and it's on the walkways, and it's where in most cases where there's invasive plants that we have been trying to rid ourselves of. Now it's all in the eye of the beholder. We had one gentleman tell me that that we, he was very upset when we, we took down some of the poison sumac that was uh, along the side of the roadway over this area, which was just part of our, the ongoing work of the Parks Department to take care of it. Well, it's, so it's in the eye of the beholder as to what's pretty. Now sumac and even uh, uh, some of the other invasive plants at certain times of the year may look attractive. Uh, but what's happening is they're, they're really changing the character of, of the park on their own. And we've got several areas that we're really concerned about. Uh, we have a, about $10,000 a year in our budget for tree maintenance. And if any of you have had a tree taken down recently, you realize that it doesn't take very long before that money's gone. We just recently had to take down a tree very near the bandstand, which was huge. If you've been in the park recently, it had five, uh, I'm not sure what the technical term is, but there were five uh, parts of the tree, and it was huge. Uh, and that's created a hole. And one of the things that we're concerned about is as we lose the current good trees versus the invasive trees, we don't have the growth 
to, to fill it in. So that's part of what we hope to accomplish with this plan. I don't know if that answered your question. Did. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else who would like to make a comment? Everybody sure? Nobody else? Well, close the public. <coughs> John, do you want to come back up to here and, and or whomever, or would you like to come back up and and um, more questions? Any questions from the board? I think many of the um, well, the the few people who wrote in who were concerned about changing the character of the park. I think you have explained well so that anybody listening if they wrote in would have heard the responses but is there anybody that has anything that they would like to ask? Yes. I'll start. Scott. Um, I'm uh, curious what you mean by the comment that the Cape Elizabeth Public Works Director will oversee and manage the implementation of each new planning area. What, what do you foresee um, Mr. Malley doing? Um, yeah, and we, this, was, this came out of a meeting that we had with Bob, and uh, Bob volunteered that effort uh, for him in his department to perform. Um, as, as, the, um, as the project is being implemented, um, he would be, his department would be responsible for overseeing um, the implementation and uh, the management of the, the project. So we really don't know what he and his group will be doing at this point as far as how, how much time or how, how big his crew will be or? No, okay. he didn't, he didn't uh, offer that. <laughs> I, I believe that more it will be in kind of an, an oversight role. He's just going to make sure of the integrity of what we're doing, I think is really how I would mm -hmm. view it. That we don't, we're not expecting that he's going to be doing the work. We would have other people doing the work, but he's kind of there to keep us in line, I guess, is, is how I would say it. That if, if this is the area we intend to plant, mm -hmm. then we're going to be digging there and planting there. I understand that, but, you, but how long is it going to take to do f um, phase 1A? One one oh. Is this a three-month three project or 30-day project? I would, I would anticipate, well, I mean, the, 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 the first thing that has to be done is the clearing and the grubbing, and uh, Skip Murray is going to perform that activity. Uh, that may take, you know, a week to two weeks to do, mm -hmm. um, uh, which would include importing uh, loam and compost material and spreading it. <clears throat> the actual planting may take 30 days. Depends how many people you have. Yeah, it depends on, on the labor, but, um, you know, somewhere in that vicinity. And I think what Bob is acting in the capacity of, I mean, this is, this is the town property, the applicant is the town, um, and Bob would oversee the actual construction of each phase. I have some more questions, but I think I'd like to wait. Anybody else have any questions? Go right ahead. Just to kind of, Mr. Collins, to go on your question. When I heard about this project, I actually asked the public works director what he thought. I was expecting not what I got for an answer. And his answer was that he was looking forward to it because he felt that over time it would actually reduce his maintenance uh, demands because they wouldn't have to be cutting back so much in the invasives. And my sense is based that, you know, Mr. Malley takes his responsibilities very seriously and my guess is that he doesn't want anybody mucking around in Fort Williams without him having total control over what they do in the end. And that's why my guess is that there was a request to put his name in there rather than an effort to try to drag Public Works into subsidizing this effort. Scott, 
you want to go ahead with the rest of the um, questions? Nobody else has questions? Thank you. Okay. Well, I guess um, as I'm sitting here listening to the presentations and, and some of the comments and some of the emails, um, I, I'm wondering if we're, we're approving too much right now. And um, I just got a sense there's a lot of unknowns uh, on this type of project. Um, and I'm wondering if it just makes more sense to approve one pod now and then see how that goes, everything from raising money to the maintenance and Bob Malley's participation and um, get some more public um, feedback after the first pod is, um, you know, finished and then have them come back for, say, the rest of the remaining 14. Comment? Scott, I had um, a similar concern, and I raised that last time. I guess what I'm trying to get clear on in my own mind is what our role here is as the planning board. Um, and if all we're doing is looking at whether we think the sedimentation control is adequate and the traffic concerns are dealt with and the specific site plan approval criteria are met, then if we say this is a model and assuming the same standards are applied to all the other pods, then, then I suppose we could approve this one and, and give the uh, town manager or the public works director or even the town council, and I'm not clear who's actually making these determinations going forward, whether these site plan specific criteria are met phase to phase to phase. I think some of the questions that have been raised tonight to some extent are more, I think, the jurisdiction of the town council. Are we burdening the town with economic obligations that we think are not appropriate for the town to take on? Are we changing the character of Fort Williams? And I'm not sure to what extent that's our concern. If that is within our jurisdiction, then I would definitely agree with you. We should try one phase and have the opportunity to come back after that phase and look and see how it went, <coughs> whether we think the project is not only meeting those specific criteria, but also in a broader sense appropriate. So that's, that's kind of what I'm going through in my mind, and I'd be interested to hear what other folks on the planning board think about that. First, I want to say I commend the uh, ad hoc committee. Um, I'm fully supportive of your plan. Um, I, I think that your efforts um, will improve the park um, solely as a result of non-invasives uh, or the invasives being r removed in the areas that you're working on, but also because you're planting of native species. And I think your efforts um, are, are commendable. Um, I agree that there is a, a large scope, but I think it's a unified project. And I think that um, your comments about what the proper role of the planning board uh, are met if we say that all future pods um, have to comply with the regulations or the, um, the, the zoning and the, the site plan that we have approved um, as a result of the first one being a demonstration project. And I think it's best left to the town council as they approve the further phases to address the character issues and ongoing maintenance issues. So that's my response. And my concern is mostly economic. Um, I think it's a great project. Uh, I can't wait to see it. And I guess my concerns are somewhat assuaged by um, the next pod won't be started until the money's there. So I really can't argue with that. I hope that's really, the money's really there. You know, it's a tough time to go fundraising right now. But uh, that was my only concern. Anybody else, Beth, have anything you want to say? I think the effort is, is terrific. I've got probably two concerns. I shared uh, Jim's concern about finances. I'm concerned about saddling the town with maintenance, whether it's intended or not intended when I see public works director and town manager and maintenance in perpetuity, but perhaps only for five to six years, I, I'm concerned about that. 
that said, um, the work on the park is necessary. You know, my kids, both of my children basically grew up there and I know um, what it looked like 15, 20 years ago and I know what it looks like now. In terms of the site plan review, I, I would feel, feel far more comfortable approving the entire thing if I had for every pod what we have for pod one. Um, and I realize, I understand why we don't, but if I look at our model or the processes we go through for site plan review on a different type of project, we would not approve one piece, we would not, we would not approve an entire plan with only detail on one piece. Um, if we were looking at a subdivision or we were looking at a, another type of development. So I'm a little bit concerned about setting a precedent in that, in that manner. Um, I wasn't here for our last full meeting. If I had, I would have wanted a, public, a, a site walk because I would very much like to know exactly where these are. I know the park pretty well, but it's very hard for me to identify them. Um, so I'm a little conflicted. I'm not, not entirely sure if it's the best thing for the town long term based on the information we have tonight. Well, I, I guess I'll jump in here. I'm not terribly concerned because um, we have enough oversight, I think, without having the planning board be part of this. And, and I think maybe we need to make this part of our um, approval that we have the Fort Williams Advisory Committee that is going to be monitoring this whole thing. I mean, nothing's going to go forward without the approval of the Fort Williams Advisory Committee. And they're citizens just like we are. And they're very concerned specifically with the park. We're concerned with the whole town, but they're concerned specifically with the whole park. And then we have another level in that you have to then take it to the town council for their approval. So I don't feel particularly uncomfortable. I think this project is very different from other projects in that if we approve the whole 15 pods, all the pods, we have, we have a mechanism in place that is going to be overseeing this all the time. So I'm not the least bit uncomfortable that we are extricating ourselves from it at all. No. Well, I would agree that the oversight and the support of the Fort Williams Advisory Committee gives me a lot of comfort. Well, I think we need to make that part of our <coughs> approval. It isn't, right now it isn't in here, and I think we need to put it in here as, mm -hmm. as part of one step, that it has to be done in conjunction with the Fort Williams Advisory Committee, and then goes, the other phases go to the town council. <coughs> so. other, other comments or? Following up on that, I think we need to incorporate in our approval the most recent letter from Mitchell Associates and particularly where it talks about future plans it says in the third bullet point the town council will review and approve each new planning location to ensure that the plans adhere to town planning requirements that's I think kind of unusual an unusual determination for the town council to be making um, does the Fort Williams Advisory Commission, and, and I don't know if I can ask the question at this point, anticipate essentially reviewing with the town council the kind of detail that has been reviewed with us, including the various erosion, erosion control plans, traffic and pedestrian plans? Will all of that go to the town council so that they're essentially doing our site plan function at each phase of the program. It sounds to me like perhaps that's what's anticipated here, but I'm not sure that's what's being said. Can I address that? No? Yes, yeah. please do. Um, <clears throat> that's what was anticipated. Um, in, in the, uh, under the paragraph one and two, um, as we proceed in subsequent phases, we do intend to show uh, to address stormwater management uh, issues and erosion control issues and to graphically, basically to show 
to prepare a plan as we have for phase 1A. And the town council would be the decision-making body as to whether those site plan criteria had been met? Yeah, well, it, um, as well as the Fort Williams Advisory Commission, Marine, the town manager, and the town council. So, so why and, go to the, and Bob Malley, I guess. So, so why go to the town council and not just come back to the planning board? <clears throat> uh, it was recommended that we, uh, that the Fort Williams Advisory Commission provide a recommendation to town council uh, to make sure that we are adhering to um, let's see, I'm sorry, um, to ensure that the plans adhere to town planning requirements. It sounds more like the plan board than the town. Well, I'm wondering so if that's going to get bumped to us. <laughs> Not to put you on the spot. But to put you on the spot. Exactly. <laughs> what the heck, right? Um, I think what we've been trying to suggest is that um, the Fort William Advisory Commission really has uh, a level of expertise because they focus exclusively on Fort Williams Park. At the same time, we're trying to balance their, their skill and their expertise with the political status of that group as an advisor to the council. Now, the assumption is that the Fort, Williams, Fort William Advisory Commission <coughs> would work out any kinks, make sure you've got a perfectly good plan, and then, like every other decision they make, it would have to go to the it would have to go to the council for final approval. The concern with including the council in the motion is, what if the Fort William Advisory Commission didn't approve a phase? If you don't include the council in your motion, what you've done is you've conveyed to an advisory group an opportunity to stymie the group that appoints them, mm -hmm. which is not an administratively good thing to do. So I. I now, the, the idea would be that I, I don't see the council and the managers here, and I keep looking at him, hoping he'll jump up and help me soon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that the council would not really be in the role of reviewing site plans. That, that the, okay. the role of the site plan details would be with the Fort Williams Advisory Commission, and that the council would just continue to exercise the same oversight over that commission that they do for every other thing it does. They, I mean, the, the Fort William Advisory Commission reviews every single event that's held in the park, and then they make a recommendation to the council because they cannot, you know, all by themselves approve any, any activity in the park. In the end, it still goes back to the council. So that's why there's that chain of command. Could, could I say one thing to prior to you, Mike? Um, the chairman. <laughs> chairman. Uh, there is another, another consideration about, and, and I, I think the idea of it going to the council is also a good one, uh, because they do, they act under the aegis of the council, not under ours. The other part of it is, too, we have some pretty strict um, protocol for bringing things before the planning board, and we've got to remember that every time somebody comes to the planning board, it costs a fair amount of money. Whereas if they went from the Fort Williams Advisory Committee to the town council, then we're eliminating 14 sets of plans. And, and I think we have to be mindful of that in this, too. And again, I feel really comfortable that we have a group that is responsible for the park who is essentially going to be responsible for this project. But I really have nothing further to add. I think Maureen and you, Madam Chairman, have explained it perfectly. So well, Maureen, are you involved in this process? Because I don't see your name. I, you know, I work for the manager, and I'm involved in everything he wants me involved in, so. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to make a motion for the board to consider. Please do. Um, based upon the findings of fact one, that the town of Cape Elizabeth is requesting site plan review to construct an arboretum in Fort Williams Park, which requires review under section 19-9 site plan regulations. Two, the Fort Williams Advisory Committee is appointed by the Town Council to provide advice to the Town Council on activities and improvements within Fort Williams Park. Final decisions regarding Fort Williams Park are made by the Town Council. Three, the Ad Hoc Arboretum Committee will be fundraising and designing the Arboretum at 15 sites in phases, which will require the, the recommendation of the, and approval of the Fort Williams Advisory Committee. Four, the application substantially complies with Section 19-9 Site Plan Regulations. Five, this is not on the draft motion, 
The Planning Board has reviewed the October 31st letter from Mitchell and Associates to the Planning Board and hereby incorporates the terms and conditions of the same herein. I'm happy to provide that language. That based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, including the Mitchell and Associates October 31st letter, the application of the Town of Cape Elizabeth for site plan review to establish an arboretum on 15 selected sites in Fort Williams Park in Fort Williams located on Short Road be approved subject to the following conditions. One, that no site other than, than B, Phase 1, be commenced without the recommendation of the Fort Williams Advisory Committee and the approval of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. And two, that no site be commenced without a determination by the town manager that adequate funding has been raised to complete the site. We have a second. A second. Discussion? Okay. I just have a question, and I realized I seconded it. <laughs> um, I did for this reason. The, the second condition, Tom, would it make sense to say to complete and maintain the site? We keep, we keep hearing people talking about that there, it won't be undertaken until there's enough money there to complete it and maintain it in perpetuity. I wonder if it's worth memorializing that in the, in the condition. Um, a, a friendly amendment accepted. I, I don't think there's any problem with that. I just, it might be worth having that in writing. So, so are you writing in complete and maintain? Sure. Okay. All right, do we have a, um, so you, you're moving with that condition, and then we do we have a second with the, okay. any second. more discussion? All those in favor? Okay, unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We'll just give a minute to for those people who we have another project, please. So Another For those who are watching on television, we're just trying to get the, the presentation in order for the next project. Are we ready? Shh, please. Thank you. All right, please state your name and introduce your project. My name is Jay Cox. <laughs> They're never easy. My name is Jay Cox. I live at 1148 Sawyer Road, uh, where I've been planting Christmas trees since 2003, um, primarily for pick-your-own or choose-and-cut uh, sales. 
Uh, my first trees will be ready perhaps uh, this next Christmas, but possibly the year after. Um, I also want to build a farm stand uh, for the sale of pre-cut uh, trees, wreaths, um, ornaments, and other related um, items. And I'd like to start construction in the spring. Uh, this is my site plan. It was prepared by uh, statewide surveys, uh, Dale Brewer. And just to orient you, that little circle up at the top there shows where the entirety of my property is. And it's at the corner of Fickett Street and Sawyer, uh, just adjacent to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife land uh, on the corner of Fickett and Sawyer. I'm bounded by uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife to the north and also town of Cape Elizabeth, uh, Winnick, Winnick Woods. Um, Cross Hill, which isn't shown on this portion of the, the on the site plan. Uh, the Young family across the street. Uh, Bruce Sarbeck down on the, uh, Silva Drive. And other uh, neighbors across Sawyer Road um, uh, down beyond the Young property. Uh, the, the, the farm is, or my property is 50 acres. Um, the building site is in the northwest corner of the property, which is shown here. Um, the building right here, the proposed building, would be attached to my existing, existing house. Uh, the, the buildings on the property uh, at present are my house here, a garage here and a shed uh, right there. As far as existing physical features, uh, I have a stream that runs down through here. The DEP setback, the 75 foot setback is shown along this line. The land is fairly, I'm getting ahead of myself, that's topography. But I've got a, lo a row of mature trees along Sawyer Road. There's a row of mature trees and a stone wall that run all the way up the property line here. Uh, there are other trees. There's a large apple right here and some uh, small trees over in here. There's also some uh, lilacs right where the building will have to go. Um, the rest of that property is, is field. This is all field here and in here. Uh, around my house is lawn, and there's a drive that, that comes through here. There's no RP1 wetlands within 250 feet, and any RP2, if, if there is any, is contained within the uh, stream setback, the 75 foot setback. Topography, it's fairly flat. That's a one foot um, topography survey. So you can see that this entire area is quite flat. It mounds up where the where my house is, and then it drops off towards the brook down this way. But otherwise, this in, this area is actually quite flat. Yeah, the reason those uh, uh, lines are so close together is it's a one foot survey. So. <coughs> the proposed building is an L and barn right here. And I'll have a, I've got some renderings that I'll put up next to show you what that looks like. The actual entrance, the retail entrance, would, would be on this gable end. And pedestrian flow is from the parking area behind the tree and into the, uh, into the retail uh, section right here. The idea there is to keep the, the pedestrians not only away from Sawyer Road, but away from my house to reduce the impact on the neighbors and passersby. I would be adding an employee toilet in the uh, barn, so I'm expanding my uh, septic uh, leach bed to, to take up the uh, to make up the difference. The other services, power and water, come from the existing house. Uh, buffering. Uh, I have again mature trees along here and along here. Uh, the general layout uh, provides very good buffering, and the. Uh, the layout of the proposed barn or uh, farm stand also does because it's at the gable end far away from Sawyer Road. The 
parking that you see there, that entire field is actually suitable for parking on turf, which is what, I, what my preference is. Um, my parents have been parking uh, cars on turf at their property for, for uh, choose and cut trees for, uh, well, many years now, and they've had good success with that. If I needed to, I would add gravel. I'd probably start with uh, French drain or something to, to drain the field. But uh, right now, it's, it's, it's hard, dry uh, land. Right now, it's a little bit wet, but in general, it's, uh, it's good for parking. The spaces you see are strictly related to the uh, farm stand. The ordinance requires 13 standard spaces. And those would be delineated with, with uh, wood curbing to indicate that there are spaces for the farm stand. And there's lots of room for overflow parking and for the choose and cut um, customers all in this area. The modifications I'm proposing are the, the building itself and a um, apron for parking or for entering the parking area right here. That's, I believe it's 20, 22 by 10 and it would be constructed according to the town standards. The, the lighting that would impact the area is a, a floodlight on the gable end of the barn. Um, and you have that information in, in the package as to the uh, type of light and the intensity. There would be light on the, uh, the main sign out in here, uh, but it would be shielded according to the requirements of the ordinance to make sure it doesn't interfere with motorists. And the signage is a sign out by the road and a wall sign on the barn. I'm aware that this drawing shows the uh, sign by the road overhanging the uh, uh, right of way. And that's basically an error on my part. I thought that that was uh, acceptable. I don't think it is. In any case, the design of the sign and the uh, location of the sign would be in accordance with the sign ordinance. Drawing and then come back to this for questions. This shows the front of the house or the, the south side of the house and barn as well as the uh, gable end that's furthest from Sawyer Road. Uh, it's a timber frame uh, barn. The uh, siding would be uh, clapboards on the gables and shingles, uh, cedar shingles on the long sides of, of the building. Um, I haven't quite decided, frankly, uh, my plan is for a full foundation. There's a bulkhead door here to uh, access the storage below. But it may end up being a, a frost wall and slab. But this is very likely how it will end up. As I said, the, the entrance is uh, down here. It's furthest from Sawyer Road. It keeps uh, pedestrian traffic and activity away from my house and from, from the road. Does anyone have any questions about this before I go back to the site plan? Jay, is that uh, about the window and the door? Is that the signage? Or yes. Yes. Yeah. The, the wall sign. You know, the primary sign is uh, it's in your package. There's two different versions that would be out by the road. <coughs> the waivers I'm requesting are. Um, a, wave, a partial waiver from the requirements of the existing physical features, primarily because it's a large parcel of land, and I, you know, obviously I don't want to uh, survey anything other than the, the building site itself. Also, this row of trees along here, they range from one inch to or, or less to uh, very large trees, and I, I really don't want to uh, indicate every single uh, tree along there, just to say that it's a mature uh, tree line. And part of that is also the soil survey. Um, the impacts on the area are minimal, and I, I prefer not to do a, a soil survey for, the, for this area. The soils are, in general, um, 
Walpole, Walpole Fine Sandy Loam in Deerfield. It's, it's uh, reasonably well drained and a good tillable soil, which is why I, my intent is to park on, on the turf. The other uh, uh, waiver request is for stormwater. Um, I'm only adding, the only impervi impervious surface that I'm adding is the, the uh, small apron and the, the, the roofs of the buildings. So I request a waiver from, uh, from that. And that's pretty much it. I'm sure I forgot a few things, so I'm, I can take any questions. Questions? Or, or before, we also have to um, have a motion for completeness. Okay. If you want to ask questions, go ahead. Yeah, I, I have a question. Um, hours of operation, I, I, I didn't really see it. And I know that it, you, you're a Christmas tree, but you reserved the right, if I remember reading it correctly, to have um, non-seasonal open year round. Yes. That's right. I anticipate that it will be, at least initially, um, just during November and December. Okay. But if I can figure a way to make it profitable uh, for longer periods, I'm, I'm requesting year-round operation. Okay. And then question for Maureen, does that, what does that do as far as hours of operation for this particular site? Discussions you've had recently about hours of operation are for the Business A district. Mm -hmm. And this is in a residential district where there are no specific hours of operation limitations. Okay. Like, you yeah. could impose them if you wanted to. Do you have a proposed hours of operation? No, I guess I'd like um, as much flexibility as is reasonable because I'm not sure how it's going to develop. I think that there may be some people that would like to come, you know, certainly to the choose and cut plot um, after dinner, for example. So I'm thinking, you know, 9 o'clock at night at the very latest, um, something like that. But I'm really not sure how the business will develop with the uh, farm stand. Given that tonight's meeting is not for final approval, that's something that I would suggest that we might want to revisit. And if I could clarify, I said that the board could regulate that. What we have is uh, advice from our town attorney that said that within the site plan regulations, you have the authority to regulate hours of operation, but you have to exercise that authority in a reasonable manner. Um, the, the specific example given was that if someone were to propose a restaurant and that we understand that in order to have a viable restaurant, you need to be able to serve dinner. If you were to require that they be closed at 8 p.m., that would be questionable in terms of your authority because you've basically undercut the proposal. So, yes, you have authority to regulate hours of operation, but it has to be reasonably exercised. I'd like to say I don't, I don't share your concern. I don't, I don't see people coming in at midnight to cut a tree down in the, in the dark. I, I, I would just be as happy to leave it flexible. And, you know, and also I don't think there are going to be hordes of people coming in. It isn't like a restaurant where you're going to have 100 people there at the same time. And you're going to have one or two or three or four people. I don't really, I'm really not concerned about regulating the... Well, my concern is that the use is as of yet undetermined, if you will, given that it could be a year-round operation and with, an, with, with no regulation with, with regard to hours of operation, I would be concerned that at a future date it, it might morph into something much greater than what is originally envisioned, particularly given the fact that we don't have any definitiveness about what the <coughs> operation is going to be in the non-Christmas season. Is it correct that you're, uh, you're asking for this as a fish and farm market, which means it's got that 75 percent of the retail sales area has to be selling um, crops or things that have been grown on land in Cape Elizabeth? Yes. Okay. It, I am. This is a request under the uh, fish and farm market. I'm not sure if they're separate in the ordinance, but I believe it's fish and farm market. It, right. it, it is, and it's fairly specific in terms of what could be sold on the site, that it has to be Cape Elizabeth generated farm products um, for 75% of the retail area. So I think to some extent we have that definition. Course, the that other question I had is thinking about doing things at night. I don't see any exterior lighting here other than a, um, perhaps lighting a small amount on the sides. I don't see any lighting in the parking area or to help pedestrians get from the parking area into the barn. 
And I'm wondering if you're actually planning on being open after dark, which at this time of the year I would think you would have to be. Do you anticipate some lighting? And if so, I would think we would need to see. I think probably um, some lighting. Uh, what I had thought of, frankly, with some of the, the solar power um, path markers to <coughs> indicate the path for the people to follow. But, but I do think there will be some lighting needed to direct pedestrians for any um, hours after dark. So we would need to see that. Other questions? I'd like to make a motion. Let's do it. Um, I'd like to make a motion for completeness. Um, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Jay Cox to build a farm stand located at 1148 Sawyer Road be deemed complete. In addition, I'd like to make a motion to, do we have to do them one at a time? One at a time. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. <coughs> deemed complete. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to table for the public hearing. Excuse me. I'm sorry to interrupt. Sure. But before you table this, I would like you to finish all your discussion. Oh, pardon. One yeah. of the things you need to discuss is it's whether or not you I want to have a site walk. A site walk. Of a clearing. Yeah. So, um, are there any other questions before we go on to the site walk and public hearing? No other questions. Well, I, I had a question in terms of um, on what basis you're calculating your parking space requirements. It's supposed to be, I think, one space for 150 feet of retail. I came out with area. less than you do too. But. And it's not clear to me what you know what square footage of retail area you're anticipating. I may be incorrect, but I believe the ordinance for fish and farm market stipulates 13 spaces. Well, I read it as one space for every 150 feet, which would only be eight spaces. It's only 1,200 square feet you're adding on. Right. Well, there may be but trees I don't know outside. The retail area we're, we're calculating. Well, I, I was calculating the whole barn as retail area. Well, there also I, there may be trees outside on racks, pre-cut trees, and I believe the ordinance uh, limits a farm stand to 2,000 feet, whether the goods are inside or outside. So I would okay, you know, you, reuse the 2,000. You read that more carefully than I did. I'm sure. But, okay. Well, you still have plenty of uh, 150 into 2,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. So you're using, the, my question was what you're using, and you're using 2,000 square feet. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Other questions? I think it would be appropriate to address the question of whether a site walk was uh, needed. I don't feel any particular need to do that. But. Does anybody have a particular need to, to do a site walk for this project? I personally feel a need to go and view the site. Whether that means we need to do a formal site walk or not, I don't know, but I don't feel I know the property well enough, so I, I want to go walk. I agree. I do, too. Okay. All right. Well, let's schedule a site walk. Daylight and really looking at Saturday morning. Saturday morning. Yeah, Saturday morning. Saturday morning work for you. Sure. For Saturday morning. Okay. Um, well, it would either have to be this Saturday or after Thanksgiving. So, what about the Saturday, the 6th after Thanksgiving? Does that work for everybody? I have a ribbon. I have a ribbon cutting ceremony at 10 a.m. On the 6th? Yes. Um, Doesn't mean I can't be here. Can you do it at 9? For this. Like at you want to do it at 9? Will that work for you? Then you could go from there. Jay is 9 Does on the 6th. that for you? Saturday sure. the 6th at 9 o'clock? That's good. Can't make it. Oh. Mr. Huber? I, I, I'm picking a red eye. I, I may be there, but I probably won't be. <laughs> but you won't be awake. <laughs> <laughs> First Saturday right. in December. We need to try to beat any snow, too. I take it back. I can do that. I was thinking of Saturday. But I can't. <laughs> well, if well, only one person can't, yeah, then I think we should go ahead. You know, I would offer it. I just go on my own. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I could, I'm over there working pretty much all the time. Sure. So I, I could accommodate you guys anytime you like. 
Is that all right? So it's 9 o'clock on the 6th, okay, for everybody? Mm -hmm. All right. And um, public hearing. I would assume we should. I think we always have one default to that. So okay. I think I Start totally agree. Hearing. Yeah. So far, everything Jay, so you know, has been extremely positive. Yes, thank you. I mean, we are all anxious to support our farms. So. Oh, I think most of us are anxious to support our farms anyway. That's true. And I have serious barn envy too, by the way. Just <laughs> <laughs> like to make a motion? Please do. Um, I'd like to move that the application be tabled to the regular December 16th meeting of the Planning Board, at which time a public hearing will be held. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Anything else before we let Jay leave? Nope. Thank you very, Thank you very much. much. Thank you, Jeff. I'd like to make another motion. Motion, motion to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Goodbye. <laughs> 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 That's my role of the night.